Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for being here today. Um, it is a wonderful Saturday early evening. Um, I feel like the days are getting a little bit longer. Uh, don't forget to change your clocks this morning or tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. I guess. Um, for those of you who change your time, I don't know if everybody changes their time, but here in Indiana we do, so we are going to go um, ahead one hour. Um, anyway, so thank you for being here today. If you are interested in tarot cards, tarot readings, true crime stories, true cr or unsolved crime cases, and the occasional candle video, please consider liking and subscribing. I really do appreciate that. So I hope everyone's doing well. Like I said, I kind of feel like spring is um, slowly upon us. Uh, there's some things that are outside looking like they're trying to come back to life. Um, so that's always a good sign. And I love spring. So, um, And I'm actually doing this video during the day. I actually had to close the curtains because the sun was shining in the window so, so brightly. But i um, trying to do these videos a little bit earlier in the day so that the lighting is a little bit better for everyone to see. So um, let me move my deck here so that you can see it. I do have a new deck today and I don't know how you pronounce this name here. I don't know if it is Scarabio or Scarabio. I'm not quite sure, but it is the Low Scarabio or Scarabio tarot deck. So I just got that and um, I am loving it so far. It is a it is a deck that encompasses the three main type of tarot cards: uh, the Rider Waite, I think it's the Marcells, and the Thoth tarot deck. So they're all a little bit different. I prefer the Rider Waite tarot. That's what I'm used to. That's what I'm comfortable with. And this does have some attributes to the Rider Waite, but it also has some things that you will find in the other two decks as well. So it is a little bit different. Um, the images are the same, but not the same, if that makes sense. So the couple of times that I have used it, it is frighteningly accurate. And so um, I would like to do today's reading starting out with this. And then if we need to top it off with these two, we can. So like you have probably read with the title, today's video is on Chandra Levy. This was a requested video probably over a month ago. Um, I do have to let you guys know that for some reason, I don't know why I don't get notifications when a, a viewer replies to a comment. So it's like if there's a thread um, that's a response to a comment, for some reason I don't get notifications for that. I have to like click on it and read all the comments. and so. I've been doing that lately just to kind of see what I've been missing and I really truly apologize for anybody who has commented on a video um, and I have not responded because I do try to respond to everybody's comment on my videos. So there have been quite a few that I have missed and I feel horrible about that. So you know, if, if you comment on somebody else's comment, I'm probably not going to be able to see it unless I actually click and read all comments. Um, but like I said, I have been doing that recently and I came upon a woman who had requested about a month ago to do the Chandra Levy case. And, and so I looked into it and I thought, well, wh why not? It, it's unsolved. It's interesting. It's just got that mystery element. It's got a touch of corruption. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. So I do because this is such an older case. This happened in... Um, I think it happened in 2000, if I'm not mistaken. I have it all written down here, but I'll, I'll read that. But uh, So this has been a while. I know it happened, it, it happened literally about a year before 9-11. Uh, and it sounds like, from what I read, is that the 9-11 kind of superseded media coverage. And I hate that when that happens, when you have a case like this that is in the media and then all of a sudden something happens and it's just forgotten about it's shoved to the back burner and i feel like that's kind of what happened in the chandra levy case so as of today um no one is you know charged with her murder um lots of stuff going on with this case so what i'm going to do because it is an older case i do want to read um, you know, kind of the background, the basics of the story, and then we will get into the tarot reading. So uh, let me start that now. 
Chandra Levy, actually, no, let me move the computer up so I can see what the heck I'm doing first and put my glasses on. You guys know I always have my glasses on top of my head, and yes, I do wear them, I do need them, um, especially when I'm driving, so, and when I'm reading. All right. So here we go. All right. Chandra Levy was born on April 14th, 1977 in Cleveland, Ohio, to Robert and Susan Levy. The family eventually moved to Modesto, California, where Chandra attended Grace M. Davis High School. Chandra went on to study at San Francisco State University, where she earned a degree in journalism. Chandra then began attending the University of Southern California to earn her master's degree in public administration. As part of her final semester of study, Chandra moved to Washington, D.C. to become a paid intern with the Federal Bureau of Prisons. In 2000, she was assigned to the Public Affairs Division where she handled media inquiries, 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 inquir, inquiries, inquir, okay, on several cases, including the high-profile case of the upcoming Timothy McVeigh execution. However, Levy's internship was abruptly terminated in April of 2001 because her academic eligibility was found to have expired in December of 2000. She had already completed her master's degree requirements and was scheduled to return to California in May of 2001 for her graduation. So very uh, intelligent young woman. I guess we can say that for a fact. Okay, so Chandra had been known to communicate with her parents often, and so in early May, when she did not return phone calls or messages, her parents became concerned and called the Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia on May 6 to report that she had, they had not heard from her, their daughter in five days. Police visited Chandra's apartment in DuPont Circle and called hospitals but found no indication of foul play. On May 7th, Chandra's father told police that his daughter had been having an affair with U.S. Representative Gary Condit. Chandra's aunt also called the police and told them that Chandra had also confided in her that she was having an affair with Gary Condon. On May 10th, police obtained a warrant to conduct a formal search of Chandra's apartment, so I'm assuming that the first one was just maybe a basic scan. They found her credit cards, identification, and mobile phone left behind in her purse along with partially packed suitcases. The answering machine was full with messages from her family, as well as two messages from Gary Condit. A police sergeant tried to examine Levy, Levy's laptop computer and accidentally corrupted the internet search data. So um, we've got, mm, I mean, I, I suppose it's easy to do something like that. It's a mistake, but um, it was a pivotal one in this case. Um, it took computer experts a month to reconstruct the computer data to determine that the laptop was used on the morning of May 1st to search for websites related to Amtrak, Baskin Robbins, Gary Condit, Southwest Airlines, and a weather report. She had also searched at 11.30 a.m. information about Rock Creek Park in the Washington Post Entertainment Guide and then clicked to bring up a map of the park. Unfortunately, we know now that Levy's remains were found in that very same Rock Creek Park a year later in May of 2002. So, I mean, everything, of course, is, you know, 2020 in hindsight. So perhaps maybe if they had had that information on her computer right away, it's possible that they would have, you know, found that she was searching that park and could have maybe even looked in that area. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Controversy surrounded this case because of the affair between Levy and Condit. Condit denied ever having an affair with Chandra and also failed a polygraph test given by the DC police, but he did pass a test administered by a privately hired examiner on June, July 13th. Condit's apartment was searched on July 10th and police began investigating Condit for, at the very least, obstruction of justice. According to identified police sources, Condit finally admitted to the affair on July 7, 2001. However, Condit avoided answering any direct questions involving Chandra Levy during an interview with Connie Chung on August 23rd. 
So um, just to go into that a little bit, it sounds like for the longest time he denied any kind of an affair. Um, and this uh, unknown... Um, this unknown uh, police officer who claims that he admitted to an affair. We don't know if that's the case or not. Um, I do believe that Condit finally, uh, I believe he finally admitted to having an affair with her, but this was something that he denied for a very, very long time. So unfortunately, the attacks on September 11th, 2001 superseded the media's coverage on the case. However, in a nationwide Fox News poll of 900 registered voters, 44% of Americans believe that Condit was involved in Levy's disappearance, and 27% felt he should resign. Um, Condit did go on to lose the re-election in 2002 with the Levy case cited as a factor. He was subpoenaed to appear on April 1, 2002 before a District Columbia grand jury regarding the disappearance, But all this information was kept secret from the public. Obviously, nothing really came of it, I'm assuming. Chandra's remains were found on May 22, 2002, around 9.30 a.m. by a man who was walking his dog. Remains were matched by dental records. Detectives found bones and personal items scattered, not buried, in a forested area along a steep incline. A sports bra, sweatshirt, leggings, and tennis shoes were among the evidence collected. Although police had previously searched over half of this park earlier in the disappearance, the wooded slope where the remains were ultimately found had not been a place police had looked. After a preliminary autopsy, police announced that there was sufficient evidence to open a homicide investigation. However, there was not enough information to know exactly the cause of death. There was damage to her hyoid bone, suggesting she possibly could have been strangled, but ultimately it was deemed inconclusive. On June 6, private investigators hired by Chandra's parents found her shin bone with some twisted wire about 25 yards from the other remains. Police Chief Ramsey said, he came out and he made a statement, quote, it is unacceptable that these items were not located, end quote. So we've got a couple of things going on with the police department. Um, They botched the computer when they first went in and and did their search it took them a month to retrieve and you know get back what they lost on her laptop and therefore possibly you know lost time searching I mean you know at least I know she was probably passed away at that point but um you know a whole year went by before her parents knew what had happened to her and you know possibly had they searched that park earlier they would have at least maybe have been able to find her remains but we've got the laptop situation and now we have the fact that you know even when they did find her remains in the park they didn't search it obviously very well because her family after hiring a private investigator finds more remains in the park just 25 yards away so It just seems like, again, I don't know, in all these cases, it just seems like there's always some sort of, um, you know, sloppiness or incompetence involved in these cases. And I always will add in there, you know, it's either that or it's something more sinister. You know, is this a case where they're just trying to be sloppy? Um, I I don't know. I hope not. But anyway, so we're going to go into the suspects. So in September 2001, D.C. federal prosecutors were contacted by a local inmate who claimed to have knowledge of Levy's killer. The informant said that Ingmar Guandique, a 20-year-old man from El Salvador who was in jail at the time, told him that Condit paid him $25,000 to kill Chandra. So they do look into this Guandique guy um, and come to find out a co-worker stated that Guandique did fail to show up for work on the day that Levy was killed as well um, and here's a twist kind of kind of crazy coincidence he was actually serving time for assaulting two other women in that very same park okay so before Chandra Levy had been to this park he was already in jail I think serving time for assaulting women in this park so 
They did approach him, but Grandique denied attacking Levy. He also failed a polygraph test, so that didn't help him. However, the test was given to him in English, and English was not his primary language. However, on March 3rd, an arrest warrant was issued for Guandique, and he was charged with the death of Chandra. Guandique pleaded not guilty as at his arraignment, and a trial was set for January 27th, 2010. So we've jumped from 2001 to 2010 now. The date was eventually moved to October 4th, 2010, um, and on July 28th, now on November 22nd, the jury found Guan, Guandique guilty of first degree murder. So they do go through the trial, and this informant, um, I, I believe, does, uh, he is a witness, and he does say that this Guandique guy did you know, admit to killing Chandra Levy for the $25,000. However, Guandique is denying that, steadily denying that. One of his um, defenses that he was saying was that the two women that he attacked in that park earlier, those, those were just attacks. He robbed them. He didn't kill them. And so that was also a cause of concern. I believe that this whole trial had a lot of causes for concern. Um, the informant himself was eventually later on found to be unreliable, um, that he had lied. Um, there was another witness that was called in to, uh, you know, kind of be almost like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Another witness that knew this informant came forward and basically said, you know, this guy can't be trusted. Anyway, it was just a hot mess, okay? So I can't even get into all of the stuff that happened with this um, Guandique guy, but uh, ultimately, he did get found guilty, but he ended up appealing that, and eventually they end up they, they did end up giving him, um, or the prosecution uh, ended up not following through with another trial, and instead they ended up deporting him back to El Salvador. So... The Washington Post came out and said that prosecutors had lost faith in the case after learning that witnesses lied and secretly recorded in the original trial. So this this trial was a mess, basically, on this Guandique guy. Um, and so here we are back to square one. So to this day, Chandra's case has yet to be solved, and no one has faced any charges for her murder, murder since that time. So... But like I said, we're back to square one. We we don't know. Um, you know, is it something to do with Gary Condit? Is it something to do with this Guandique guy? Um, you know that that's kind of where we're at. So there's no answers to this to this case. And here we are in 2021. Um, she would have been probably I don't know 43, 44 years old right now. Um, I know that the Gary Condit guy, he ended up kind of getting out of politics, um, doing something else. I think he's still with his wife, his kids, I think have kind of followed in his footsteps as far as getting into politics. But I don't think when I looked it up, they haven't been doing too well. Um, so this kind of follows him around, I think, and follows his family around to this very day. So what I want to do is I want to start out a little bit differently. And I want to I want to um, not draw so many cards on Sh uh, Chandra, but more cards on Gary Condit and this Guandique guy. So I want to see what comes out, and then I do want to kind of see what's happening with Chandra. I, I don't want to just leave Chandra out, but I do kind of want to focus on these two suspects. So for the first drawing, I want to do a yes or no case, or a yes or no question as far as Gary Condit and Guandique. Okay, so did did they have anything to do with this case, yes or no? So that's what we're gonna start out with and then we'll see what comes up and we'll go from there. So we've got Gary Condit, Ingemar Guandique. Actually, let's do Gary Condit first. Did Gary Condit have any thing to do with Chandra Levy's murder. Gary Condit have anything to do with Chandra Levy's murder. Gary Condit have anything to do. Okay. 
Wow. Okay. So those fell out. Okay. So my question was, is did Gary Conant have anything to do with Chandra Levy's murder? And as a yes or a no, these would both to me be a yes. Okay. But especially the stars. Um, and we've got the King of Swords and literally in this deck, the King of Swords is holding a woman's head. Okay. So he's obviously just beheaded someone. So that is very telling and very chilling as far as the first cards being uh, drawn for Gary Condit. So, um, you know, and also this one here, the stars, you know, you can think of it as, you know, many there, you know, there's a lot of stars in the sky, right? So there's a ton of stars. So I also sometimes look at this card as being, you know, several people. Um, and so it makes me kind of feel like, yes, but he's not the only one involved and it could potentially be, you know, a, a, a group of individuals or at least more than one, um, persons involved in this case, but definitely he is the head honcho. So, um, I, I have to put that out there. Okay. So very interesting to have those two come up. So now we're going to ask the same question of Ingmar, um, Guandique. Did Ingmar Guandique have anything to do with Chandra Levy's disappearance and murder? So because I pulled two, I'm going to pull two for him. All right. So um, I, looking at the Seven of Cups, I'm saying no because that would be a no card to me because that is indecisiveness. Your head is in the clouds. You're not thinking straight. Um, but that's also a scary one to say no because was this an option that was given to him? Was this something that was brought to him by someone else? And, you know, but, but honestly, if we are just doing the yes, no, I'm going to have to go with, um, no for the seven of cups, the king of wands, however, to me would be kind of a yes. So honestly, in this case, I'm not ruling out the Ingmar, um, Guandique guy. I'm really not. I don't, I, I don't have enough here to say absolutely not. He wasn't involved in this at all. Um, but I'm, I'm leaning towards, I'm leaning towards not, to be honest with you. And then you've got all this fire over here with the King of Wands that just, that just screams a no to me, um, for, for me, for, for my, um, feelings of it. It just doesn't, it just doesn't. And, and to me, this doesn't even, it's not a good match for this man because he was only 20 at the time. And so, um, I don't feel like this is him. I feel like this is someone else. And so I'm kind of wondering if it kind of makes me think about the fact that he, you know, the, the, the rumor is, is that he was offered $25,000 from Gary Condit to do this crime. So is this the person here that came to him and offered for him to do this or asked him to do this? And these are the, you know, option. These are him trying to decide whether or not he wanted to do it. What would be the benefit? What would be the cost? Um, you know, so definitely interesting first few cards to pull on this. But honestly, for the Gary Condit guy, um, I, ugh, that's not looking good, to be honest with you. So I guess I need to remember to turn these sideways so you guys can see them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put these back in the deck and then I'm going to reshuffle and kind of get into Gary Condit and Chandra Levy's relationship and see what comes out. So already I'm kind of leaning towards Gary Condit. It just seems like that King of Swords holding the head and the stars, uh, that's a scream for yes. Um, it's it, mm, honestly, if I had to choose between the two, I would probably pick him based, <laughs> based off of the cards that I drew. Um, but I am going to, uh, see if 
while we're asking about Chandra and Gary's relationship, if a possible motive could come up and see what we, we find. So can we get some information on Chandra Levy and Gary Condit's relationship? What was their relationship like? Um, honestly, for a fact, in my opinion, okay, this is a, my opinion, so it's fact for me, but um, Gary Condit seems like he definitely liked to fool around. So this was a man who, um, you know, the, Chandra was not the only, excuse me, was not the only female that he was seeing outside of his marriage. So I believe that some other relationships did come out. Um, so this is a guy that I think liked to play around. And it's kind of ironic because when I was looking him up, apparently he was one of the main Democrats that came out when Bill Clinton was going through his, you know, sex accusation thing with, you know, the, I can't even think of her name, but, um, Anyway, Gary Condit actually came out and was trying to um, encourage Bill Clinton to be honest and just straightforward and come out and tell the people if you've done something. And it's just so ironic because you're like, okay, you know, here a woman goes missing. You don't know if she's dead or alive and you can't admit anything on your end. So it's just very hypocritical and, um, you know, kind of a double standard. But I guess that's nothing new. So, what can we find out about the relationship between Gary Condit and Chandra Levy? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So let me turn these over. I always forget to do that. There's a particular card or a few cards that I'm waiting and anxiously waiting to see if they are going to come out or not. So hasn't come out yet, but I am curious. All right, so um, we have an exchange. So we have the Six of Cups. So this tells me that these two were definitely exchanging gifts, okay? Um, I, I do believe that, uh, you know, he did admit, Gary Condit did admit to giving Shand Chandra a, um, was it a necklace or a bracelet or something? Um, I believe that she gave him gifts, so I do think that that is something that was commonly done between the two of them. Um, it possibly, you know, this is doesn't have to be finances or financial, but this is the Six of Pentacles as well, uh, you know, obviously. So was there financial exchanges? Would he loan her money? I don't know. It's a possibility that that was also part of their um, gifting, but definitely a lot of gifting going on back and forth. Um, I do believe that one or both of them were pondering the situation, were, were, you know, thinking about this relationship and really asking themselves if this was working out. Um, I kind of feel like this is more Chandra than I do Gary because I kind of believe that Gary didn't think too much of this relationship. It was just the normal playing around that he did often. Um, you know, Chandra wasn't the first person and well, she might have been the last, but she definitely wasn't the first person that he had done this with. So he, he I don't think that he was ever having a sit down and meditate moment on my action. So I kind of do feel like this four of swords here is more or less coming from Chandra. I think that that's her. That's, that's what I'm picking up with this case um, or this card. So I do feel like I, I do feel like she was possibly wanting to put the brakes on the relationship a little bit and really truly think about if this is what she wanted and how was this going to work out. Now, I do remember reading somewhere that she, um, you know, was hoping that this would 
become more fruitful, that perhaps he would leave his wife, they would get married, they'd have a family. Um, so in reality, I don't think Gary Condit was at all ever planning on doing any of that. He may have told her that, but I don't believe that he was ever planning on doing that. And so, um, you know, was it getting to the point to where Chandra was starting to recognize that? And was she starting to contemplate that and think about things? Um, and maybe wanting to take a break. And after all, she was planning on going back to Modesto, California because her internship had ended. So that could also be playing a part in why this card is coming up. It would have produced a break, okay? Um, definitely, again, we've got leaving. And so I do think that this is what she was in the process of doing. Um, like I said, her internship had been ended and you know even her bags were partially packed in her apartment uh, I believe that she ended up uh, that week canceling her her gym membership um, you know it was just she she was leaving and this is a card of leaving rough waters and going towards calmer waters okay so I don't think that this relationship although there were nice times where they were enjoying themselves in each other's company. I don't think it was, it wasn't turning out quite like how she had expected it to with this. This tells me that there were issues in the relationship. Something, something wasn't, um, I'm sorry. Something wasn't going like how she expected it to go. Okay. So, um, she, she was leaving. She, she was definitely leaving. So this one here is interesting because we've got the Ace of Cups. And so that's something new. This is something new. So I want to keep this in mind because I want to draw some more cards to see if it kind of coincides with what I'm thinking. Okay, because I'm not I'm not sure yet, but let's keep this in mind. So we've got something new developing here. Um, the Eight of Swords. So this is her kind of feeling you know, I, I kind of imagine that this was definitely how she was feeling at this point in time. Let me move that up so you can see it. Um, kind of trapped. Um, you know, I, I don't think when you're in a relationship with somebody that um, is not in it 100% like you are, um, or that person has, you know, a wife and, and a family, and it just, you know, I, I, I think that this probably explains her whole feelings at that time just can't see her way out of this situation um feeling stuck in this situation and so i kind of wonder if i understand that they're saying that the internship ended because of you know something technical but it also kind of makes me feel like you know it was kind of approaching the time to where she was also choosing to leave herself um, and things just weren't going like how she had hoped or how she had planned. There's definitely more to the story than, than we know. There's some illusions and delusions going on in this story because this is all about not seeing everything for what it is. So there's something else going on in this case that we are not aware of even all these years later. Um, so there's information that we don't have. I don't know if the family has it. I don't even know if the police have it, but there are definitely some secrets surrounding this case. So that, that probably is, you know, pretty, pretty obvious. Um, you know, again, I don't know if this is to, okay, I'll be honest with you. I think it's less to do with the case as it is more to do with their relationship because this little eight card spread here is based off of their relationship. I'm curious to know about the relationship. So there's something else going on in the relationship that we all are not aware of because, you know, that that's kind of expected because, you know, there were two people in this relationship and one of them alive, one of them is alive and one of them isn't. And so we're only hearing one side of the story and that person isn't being very forthright or forthcoming and is being very very uh, disingenuous and dishonest and so we're not getting everything that's going on in this in this relationship he this to me tells me for sure that he is deceiving people okay he, he's not being fully honest um so there's that and you know i did see a clip and i'm gonna try to share it in 
the um, uh, in the video here, but I did see a clip where he did an interview, and I think it was recently, like maybe past five year recent type area, but he did an interview with Dr. Phil. And honestly, I don't know what's scarier, that Dr. Phil believed what he said, or just the fact that he was outright lying. I mean, honestly, it seemed like Dr. Phil was convinced that this guy was being honest, and you could really, really, truly tell that this guy was being dishonest, if anything. And so, um, even to this day, I feel like he's being very dishonest, and he's not telling us everything about that relationship. So this one here, um, I kind of feel like this is not, again, because of the deck that I'm using right now, I get a completely different vibe from this Four of Pentacles. I get almost a confinement, uh, uh, you know, being being just confined in, in, in borders, okay? There was, there, there's like a lack of balance because if you look at this particular card in this in this deck we've got all the elements represented on each pentacle so we've got the earth we've got water we've got fire we've got air we have all those little symbols okay and so the fact that those symbols are you know located in the four corners of this little forts or fort or house represents balance okay so to me it represents balance and so this is kind of indicating that this person possibly because they feel so confined they don't have balance in their life okay so i kind of feel like this here these two cards really really kind of show um how chandra was feeling okay i feel like this is more chandra than i do uh gary he was out of whack himself but i don't think his bothered him okay he he just was doing his own thing um, enjoying his position, enjoying his uh, power and authority and, you know, loving to uh, prey on these young women. Okay, I don't think he was reflecting on anything or caring about anything or trying to seek balance in his life or anything like that. But I do believe that Chandra was. And so that's why I feel like these are more or less representing Chandra and her feelings. So she, she at, this is telling me that she felt something wasn't right something's not right in her at this point in time and i believe that this relationship between her and gary had for whatever reason started to sour now whether that is something happened in the relationship or if maybe he was just growing tired of her or maybe he was now starting to send messages that he wasn't going to leave his wife i don't know but i don't feel like at this point in time it was the happy relationship that she was maybe experiencing at one point time earlier so something i feel like had started to to change something had started to sour in this relationship so then we've got the magician i think that this could honestly be chandra as well as gary Connett. i think that he was very he, he was a very powerful person as far as his position is concerned but i think that she was also very intelligent and very uh skillful and very definitely the type of person that could you know, set her goals and reach those goals. Um, however, I feel like in this particular case, we are indeed looking at Gary Conant because this person is also um, a trickster, okay? This is a manipulative person. This is a person that um, plays games, manipulates people, think that, you know, makes people think one thing, but it's actually the other. And so when I look at this and I compare it to the moon, okay, uh, that is not a good sign. This is not somebody that is trustworthy at all. Okay, so just just the magician and the moon next to each other. Um, to me, it's what's causing all of these emotions, these these struggle emotions on Chandra's part. Um, he was not being honest with her at all. He was not being honest with her. He was feeding her lies probably from the the you know get go. Um, and probably had her hopes up thinking that something was going to progress from this um, and come to find out it was not, okay? It was a lie. And ultimately, she kind of felt stuck, betrayed. Um, you know, things were out of balance for her. And at this point, she's starting to ponder it and think about leaving. And I think that that's what she was in the process of doing. So let's pull a few more cards 
interesting start. And actually, let me leave that Ace of Cups out because I do want to follow up on that. So we're going to leave that out. All right, so what was starting to change? What, why was it changing? Why was the relationship changing? Why was this relationship changing between Chandra and Gary Condent? Why was this relationship changing? What was happening? What was happening in this relationship? Okay, so we've got another ace. Okay, I'm still not pulling the card that I'm curious to see is coming out, but we're, we're far from done, so we, we've got plenty of time um, to see if that card comes out. And if any of you are familiar with this case, you probably know what card I'm looking at or thinking of, um, but I'll hold off for a little bit. So we do have another ace, so we've got two aces, okay, so we've got something new. Um, you know, now this here could represent her plans of leaving Washington and going back home to Modesto. That's a possibility, or it could be something else, okay? It could be the fact that she is now learning that this relationship with Gary Condit is not going to go as she suspected, okay? So it's, I feel like it's one of the two. And the strength card, I feel like that just is a good representation of Chandra's uh, endurance and perseverance. This was a very intelligent young woman. Uh, she had a very bright future for uh, ahead of her. Um, you know, very, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly, it's very interesting because we've got two lions in this, in this pool. We've got the lion here and we've got the lion here. So there's something going on with the lion's presence. When I see a lion, I think of protection, especially when I'm looking at this particular card, the Knight of Wands. This is a protected man, okay? He is protected literally from head to toe. He's got his armor. He's got, you know, he's sitting on a lion. Who's going to mess with him sitting on a lion, right? This is somebody that you're not going to mess with, and he knows it. He's very... He's got that air about him like, mm, don't even, okay? And nobody would because they're not going to mess with this lion. So this screams protection to me. And then we've got it here as well. So I do kind of feel like I'm getting a vibe, honestly, that Chandra, I, I kind of in my mind feel like she looked at Gary as a person that would protect her. Okay, for some reason. Um, and of course, when you're in love, and I'm not saying that she loved this man, but you know, let's just say hypothetically, she was falling in love with him. When you are falling in love with someone, of course, you're looking at that person, especially if you're a female, you're looking at that man to protect you, right? And I kind of feel like she had this idea in her mind that, you know, he was that, that man, he was going to protect her. He was someone she could trust. Okay, she could confide in him, she could trust him. But then we've got the death card right next to it. And in this case, I, I kind of take it both literal and not literal in this situation, because ultimately, we know that's what happened to her. But I also feel like it's representing these two here just, you know, just a complete betrayal of what she was expecting out of this relationship. I really do feel like she trusted him and she, you know, uh, felt that he was going to take care of her and protect her and probably felt like the, the feelings were mutual. Um, and, and that's not what happened. And, you know, I do think that right here, I, I think honestly, this represents to me, this card, it's a work card, okay? It's kind of a methodical work card. But to me, this is the type of person, it, it's definitely kind of explaining to me the type of person that Chandra was, both of them really, 
Um, even though he was a quote unquote player, um, he was doing, well, I take that back. I don't know if Congress people do anything at all. I take that back. It doesn't apply to him. I do feel like this is definitely Chandra Levy, um, coming out very, um, hard at work, very diligent, very focused. Okay. Um, you know, things were going good, I think, for a very long time. Things were really going good. She was really happy where she was at. She was happy in this supposed relationship. She was working on her master's degree. And look at there, he only has one more to go. He's working on this one and he has one more to go. This tells me it was kind of like her, her last final step. And it was, it was her last final step before she walked and got her master's degree. So I do feel like this is basically everything that she was kind of feeling in the beginning of this relationship, okay? But we still need to find out what happened, what changed. We've got deception, okay? So I do believe that this is Gary Condit. This is representing him. He's very sneaky. Look, there's a snake right down here, okay? So to me, you know, this is coming out and saying that this was what this guy was doing. He was being um, very deceiving to her, very, you know, lying, a snake, okay? Um, I, I can't say it enough. This is just a plain lie card, a deception card. Okay. That's what it was. So all this stuff here, all, all this good stuff here. Okay. All these feelings that she was having, this was all based on deception. Okay. So what I want to know though, is what happened? What, what happened? Was it just the fact that she was realizing that he lied to her? Did something come out or did something come about? what happened here we've got another snake we've got another snake we've got another snake now i have noticed in this deck that snakes are very prominent in this deck um and so it, it could just be coming out that these snakes are coming out because you know it's it's common it's a common theme in this particular deck or it could be coming out because it's representing gary condit in the way he behaves and i kind of feel like it's that so I'm not really going to look at the two of pentacles as much as the two of pentacles as this kind of number eight infinity sign with the snake around it, which kind of tells me that that is what Gary Conant is, always has been, and always will be. Okay, so he is just not a very trustworthy kind of guy. He's not the kind of guy that you can, you know, um, you know, he, he's just not the kind of guy that you can trust. So... I, I do feel like that's coming out for that reason. And again, we've got the hanged man with the snake again. Okay. He's hanging by a snake instead of like a, a tree or a stick or a log or whatever. It's a snake. So I kind of do feel like in this particular case that this does represent Chandra. And I feel like her whole world was turned upside down and, you know, she was consumed really by this relationship with Gary and it wasn't an honest one okay so she did have a decision to make she she needed to decide whether or not she was going to stay in this relationship or continue doing this or to ultimately go back home and um you know she decided to go back home so I do feel like this was not a very quick decision on her part this took time um, as you can see, I do like this nine of pentacles in this deck. I don't know if you can see, but there are little snails inside the pentacles. And so that kind of adds the element of this took time. Okay. So this wasn't a fast decision that she made, uh, overnight. Um, I do believe she gave it some time and things probably weren't working out. Um, and so that, you know, was her ultimate choice was eventually to leave. So, okay. I want to keep this out. Um, and let's go to the Rider Weight deck. What am I at? 50 minutes. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. 50 minutes. Let's go to the Rider Weight deck and I feel like, I, I, I guess I'm looking for something because I've got this feeling that something happened. Okay, I really do. I got a feeling that something happened and it wasn't just a matter of 
mm, I kind of feel like this guy's lying to me. I don't think he's really going to leave his wife. It wasn't just that. There was something else that happened because she was leaving. So let's just say that Gary Connett was involved in this somehow. Okay. She was actually leaving. Okay. So what would possess him to uh, possibly harm this woman if she was actually going back to California to start her life, okay? Um, it wasn't like she was saying, hey, you know, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to buy a home here and I'm going to move here and, you know, we're going to be together. It wasn't like that. She was going back home. So let's just say that he did have something to do with it, and I feel like he did based on those first two cards that we pulled. I have to wonder if there's something else here at play, okay, as far as, you know, why he would do this or as, you know, as far as a motive is concerned. So this here was the beginning of that, and I want to see if we can kind of finish it off. So what was this big, I, because I, I feel like there was... It was a catalyst to something. What what was this? What what was it? What 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 are we looking at here? What are we missing? What are we missing? Tell us what happened. What happened between you and Gary Condit? What happened? What happened? Two of Wands. So we've got decisions. She had to make a choice. Okay, we've got, um, uh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. This is more what I'm thinking here. We've got the decision. She's got some decision she's got to make, okay? She's pondering something. Now, We've got, and let's add this to it as well. So we've got this one here. We've got the Queen of Cups. Okay, so the Queen of Cups is, if there's any queen that is comparable to, let's say, the Empress, okay, the Queen of Cups would be that queen. So, you know, this is the motherly one, the kind one, the loving one, the emotional one, okay, the one that's going to protect you okay love you so that's what this is here okay and i do believe that this is chandra even though the age doesn't quite fit okay she was 20 you know in her early 20s i think 24 um this is not going to e equate to a queen's age i would consider a queen's age more like you know 40 and and up but I do feel like this is coming out for a reason, okay? And I do feel like it is her in this case, okay? Or there's some element about this queen that is important that we have to keep keep in mind. So we've got justice. Um, interesting. Uh, you know, so let's hold on to that for a second. And then we've got the chariot. So we've got what? We've got one, two, three major arcanas in a six-card pull, okay? So... Or, or three, did I say two? We've got three major arcanas and a six card pull. So we've got the chariot. Um, the chariot in this case to me is, honestly, I feel like she had decided to, I, I think she was more looking at her future at this point. I think she was now starting to change and make decisions based on what she knew was gonna be best for her in her future. And I, I think, honestly, it, involved possibly uh, no longer maybe being a part of Gary Condon's uh, life. Um, I think this kind of, to me, this is kind of going, you know, the, the chariot to me is moving forward. That's what it is. It's movement forward. Okay. Um, any kind of obstacles that are in the way, you're going to, you know, get beyond those obstacles and you're going to keep on moving forward. So, the fact that this is coming out to me, you know, with the bags packed, with her finishing up school, getting her master's degree, going back to her family, that to me is kind of coinciding with all of that. So this is where I'm leaning to. Okay, so we've got four cards here to me that indicate a possible pregnancy. 
we've got the three of cups okay so that right there could be a celebration okay this could be a potential pregnancy we've got the sun card we've got a child on the horse okay we've got happiness warmth glowing that could potentially reinforce this as being a pregnancy we've also got the queen of cups okay and then we also pulled this ace of cups in the other deck which to me is definitely could indicate a possible pregnancy and it's a pregnancy that based off of this son is a pregnancy that she was probably happy about okay so um, I don't get here any indication that uh, this would not be a welcome um, to her okay not to him but to her so these were the cards that I was waiting to come out I was actually waiting for the Empress um, you know the three of cups was one of them that I was waiting for the Queen of Cups was a good one um, another ace of cups anything to do with motherly that's what I was waiting to come out and lo and behold it did okay it came out in four cards really so that's quite a bit to me screaming pregnancy okay so let's keep the justice card out and see what's going on with that one but let's pull a few more cards so was there a pregnancy tell us about that was there a pregnancy I honestly feel like she was pregnant I really do I, I really do Is she pregnant got that four of swords again Mm. ace of cups again all right so i think honestly we're getting down to the nitty-gritty of it i do think that she was pregnant we've got the ace of cups again now the ace of cups is something new okay it's something new it's involving feelings um it's cup so we're talking about feelings emotions this is abundance happiness this is something something good okay something that's bringing peace to someone and i do believe that honestly cards are kind of indicating that she was in fact pregnant and so i do feel like that was something that um was a factor in her her change in her her thought process changing as far as the relationship so what i kind of feel what happened is is that she did tell him that she was expecting and he he wanted no part of it he he did not want any part of it and i think that that was a blow to her and i think it was unexpected because that is not what she thought was going to happen i thought i think she thought maybe he was going to be happy and supportive and he was anything but and so that probably was the first inkling for her to say Mm, man okay I need to consider what I'm gonna do for my future she was definitely thinking about her future we've got another nine of Pentacles so her future was definitely you know this was something that was in constant thought she was a good planner she had her her ducks in a row she was finishing her master's degree so this was going to be a woman who was going to be able to handle caring for her child um you know she was headed back to modesto she'd be around her family her parents her family seemed very supportive so i do kind of feel like this was definitely something that she was trying to plan for and was excited about simply because of that son you know i i, I get good vibes about the pregnancy um so we've got the devil let's just get the devil out of the way we've got the devil you know this just kind of brings a whole negative vibe to kind of all these cards this tells me that this person here did not want anything to do with this okay this is a person that is deceptive to begin with um not a very honest stand-up person okay and you know no j just didn't and a lot of times the devil will indicate um addictions dependencies things like that i do feel like this man was addicted to women honestly I, I think that this was something that he really really um enjoyed doing and you know did it just because he could and had no affections for these women whatsoever and you know this poor girl just kind of got caught up with it and that's what happened but 
um, definitely this is him. This is Gary Condit coming out. This to me here makes me feel like it is a possibility that this was something that he possibly did not do himself, but did possibly work together with someone else to get it done. Um, sometimes the Four of Swords can indicate literal death to me. It's just a card that, especially in the Rider Waite deck, that the way the person is laying down, it does kind of, doesn't always have to be that way. It can be a truce. Um, you know, it can be, a truce is a good way to explore the Four of Swords. It can also be a time to rest, think, ponder, meditate, anything like that. Um, but in this particular imagery, I kind of feel like, this is the ultimate outcome that what to, to what happened to this young woman. Um, you know, this person here was behind it. He was the ultimate person that, that, you know, planned this, possibly worked with other people. This is the result, okay? And, you know, we've got the Five of Swords as well. I do feel like this person here is, you know, the, obviously we're talking about Gary Condit, but this is a person here that doesn't like, this is a person here that will try to get his way no matter what he has to do, no matter who he has to hurt, who he has to run over. This is a person that wants to get to the top and get his way no matter what, okay? So this is not a friendly kind of guy, okay? She really was kind of probably definitely not knowing who this man was, okay? Um, unfortunately, she found out. So let's just ask final, final, um, actually, let's go back to the low scarabio or scarabio deck however you say it and just pull a couple more cards to finish this off so will we ever have justice in this case will chandra levy and her parents ever have justice in this case will chandra levy and her parents or her family ever ever have justice in this case this case ever be solved? Will we ever know for sure? Will we ever know for sure? <laughs> well, let me stop it right there because this is not, you know, honestly, I hate to say this, but in this case, with these three cards, and, you know, things can change. We all have free will, so what the cards pick up, um, you know, today might be completely different because, you know, things change. You know, nothing is set in stone. But as of right now, okay, while I'm looking at these three cards, again, in this particular deck, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, I... I Honestly, this right here is the system. This Hierophant, that's the system, okay? The system. Um, representing politics, representing uh, religion, um, anything like that, okay? This here is the Ace of Pentacles, which is a little bit different from the Rider Waite Ace of Pentacles. There is a saying on this pentacle, and I think it says, Ophion to meta i'm not quite sure what it says but i actually when i first got this deck i was curious to know about this and so i did look it up and it's something to do with um greek literature okay and something to do with the serpent the snake and it was interesting because i was looking at these cards last night and i was pulling these cards and i'm like man there's a lot of snakes in here um and when I looked up the saying on this coin, it does say it's something like entering the, the, you know, snake or the serpent gate or something like that. So it has something to do with serpent. And to me, automatically, it, it kind of put a different vibe on this particular card. Usually the Ace of Pentacles, I would look at as a new means to making money, a new... 
uh, found way of making money, possibly a new job, finding money, winning money, anything like that. Okay. So, but in this particular case, it ha because of the association with the snakes and the serpents, it kind of has a darker meaning to it for me now. Um, and it's almost like, kind of like, here you go, but this is going to be possibly a consequence. Like, here you go, take it if you want to, um, but be careful because you don't know what's going to, kind of like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's almost like um, it has lost its positive vibe for me in this particular deck. So this one here and this one here, and, and the fool to me does not speak anything good. Okay. It just kind of tells me that there's things I think that are in the way of this case being solved. Okay. There's some, especially with these two. So you've got this card that is somehow now associated to snakes and serpents. And then you've got the system. To me, that spells corruption. It spells lies, deceivery, deception, okay? You cannot get to solving this case because this stuff here is red tape and it's in the way. Um, literally things are in the way, okay? This man is protected by these things, okay? So I don't feel like he's going to, you know, they're, they're going to be able to solve this case, unfortunately. And then we've got the fool. So this to me kind of just tells me that um, honestly, I feel like it, I feel like the fool, a little bit part of it is, I, I, I kind of feel like it's Gary Condent. Okay. And that's not what I was going to say at first. I had to think about it for a second. I feel like it's Gary Condent because this is a person who's willing to take risks but he's not, he doesn't have that uh, kind of fool like a, you know, persona. This is not a person who is not prepared, um, you know, not experienced. This is, is an experienced man. This is somebody who is prepared. This is someone who is expecting the unexpected. And that's not necessarily what you get with the fool. Okay. This is a person that's just starting out on their path and not necessarily has all the experience under their belt to, you know, go forward, but learns as they go. And I do feel like in this case, part of it resonates with Gary Condent because he is willing to take risks. Okay. But he, he also is prepared and he is expected for the unexpected. So, this is either going to be a mistake, okay, that, that he makes along the way, or it could be, um, you know, talking, it could be sharing something with someone that ends up backfiring on him. Um, it could be new evidence that comes out that, you know, possibly they weren't looking at, you know, whatever, 20 years ago or, or whatever it was. So I kind of feel like this has to be something new that honestly, when, if I'm looking at these two, two cards or these three cards, I don't feel like this case could be solved right now. So something new, something new would have to come about. Okay. And there's so much corruption because these two cards together, just this, you know, it smells of corruption and, and just red tape and barriers and the system and protection and it just doesn't have a good vibe for me okay so all this stuff would have to change it doesn't mean that it can't change but it would have to change something would happen to happen so what would have to happen in order for this case to be solved what would have to happen yeah see we've got too much protection we've got too much corruption and protection i i do believe that this is gary condit and he is protected from top to bottom. He literally has armor and he's sitting on a lion. I mean, this is a man that is untouchable. So, you know, it, it, to me, it just has to be the whole system needs to be, and this is the system I'm talking about. The whole system, the whole system is whacked. Okay. It, things have got to change from the top. Okay. Down things have got to change because the system is not doing what it's intended to do. 
So we've got certain people that are protected. They seem to be able to get away with everything. Um, and it just is sad. Okay. So it, it's sad. So I, I, I think that there's got to be change with the system. There's got to be something done. Um, no more corrupt politicians, no more politicians or people in, you know, these powerful financial world that they live in doing everything and anything that they want under the, under the sun and getting away with it. That's the problem in this case, I think. So anyway, what am I at? I'm at, a, oh my God, an hour 10. Okay. So I am going to end it there guys. I know we didn't get into the third tarot deck, but I didn't know if I was going to get into it, um, or not. So I hope you guys enjoyed this case. It was very interesting, uh, very sad case. And, um, until, until next week. Oh, I do want to mention though, really quickly. Um, I am going to be trying to do some videos midweek. Okay. I can't promise that it's going to be this week, but I'm going to try next week to start doing videos midweek. So it would be like two videos in one week. And the reason why I want to do that is because I have several videos that are, um, really needing a part two. And I have a couple of other videos that were requested a long time ago, and I really want to get those done. So I'm aiming for that. Uh, again, I'm hoping it would be by next week, but I just wanted to mention that before I forget. So until then, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I will see you next time.